South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham went from being one of Donald Trump's biggest critics to one of his closest golfing buddies. But now he's in a tight re-election race against well-funded Democrat Jamie Harrison. Today, he's here with me on Good Luck America. Hey. Hey, Senator. How you doing? Thought you were dead. How you I, doing? I live in L.A. now. I don't even come near Capitol Hill anymore. <laughs> I don't blame you. So I want to start out with a few policy questions. You were essential in brokering a deal to sell off U.S. operations of TikTok. Can you take us behind the curtain on that? So it'll close down on September 15th unless Microsoft or somebody else is able to buy it. I maybe not be the most technological savvy guy on the planet. Do you agree with that? You're pretty good. Okay, so here's the deal. If TikTok is safe, you can thank me. So I get a call from Sean Hannity. His daughter's crying. They're going to do away with TikTok. I said, uh, well, get her a new watch. <laughs> I don't follow TikTok. My niece calls me. They're going to do away with TikTok. General Petraeus calls me. They're going to do away with TikTok. Between my niece, General Petraeus, and Sean Hannity's daughter, there must be something about TikTok. So I got smart real quick. Mnuchin called me and said that Trump wants to basically shut down the platform, and you got 100 million Americans who use it, mostly young people. When they told me it was the dancing cat video site, you know, where the cats dance, I'm all in. If it's up to me, we'll never shut down anything that good to show animals dancing and all the other stuff you do on TikTok. So I called up Trump. I said, listen, the Chinese part is true. You got to be worried about communist China owning this platform, having all this data. But if you shut down this site, you're going to get kicked in the ass by a bunch of young people. Bad decision. Let Microsoft or somebody buy it, put it in American hands and allow the platform to survive and thrive because so many people enjoy it. Trump said there was credible evidence that China was gathering intelligence intelligence on Americans via TikTok. Is that true? Uh, yeah. I mean, the, the Chinese Communist Party and business interests are one. Snapchat doesn't have to report to Trump, but the Chinese Communist Party pretty much owns every business enterprise. And all the private data being collected by TikTok, as a Chinese-based company, you worry that the Chinese Communist Party will manipulate it. Now, they're trying to affect our elections, not just Russia, it's China, it's a lot of people. What specifically should someone using TikTok just to, like, upload a dance video or make Make a funny video about their dog. Like, what should they be worried about, though, from China? It's not good to have a business enterprise penetrate America this much owned by the Chinese Communist Party. Because only God knows what they will do to your data. Sell it to terrorist groups for counterfeiting. Knowledge is power. Data is power. So your privacy matters to you, but your data should matter too. Because once they know who you are and all the information about you, they can monetize it. They can use it against you. On the topic of QAnon, this is a group that the FBI has classified as a domestic terror threat. They've been involved in kidnappings yeah. and killings. Yeah. Well, I don't know much about the movement other than I understand they like me very much, uh, which I appreciate. Do you think tech platforms in this country should monitor, track, and censor QAnon in the same way they do radical Islamic terrorist groups? Can you say batshit crazy on your show? You just did. Okay. <laughs> QAnon is batshit crazy. Okay. Crazy stuff inspiring people to violence. It involves the whole space force, possible alien life, uh, like pedophiles, uh, you know, and it seeks to tie all of that together. I think it is a platform that plays off people's fears that compels them to do things they normally wouldn't do. And it's very much a threat. But there are a lot of websites out there. How do you live in this world? So under Section 230, a social media company can't be sued for the content that they care. I get slandered all the time on Twitter and other outlets. The New York Times printed an article, I could sue them. If CNN said something about me that wasn't true, I could sue them. But Twitter and all these other sites can pass on the most scandalous information. You have no reason course. So how to fix this? I would like to remove Section 230 liability. But if you're going to have a social media site like Kuan or anything else, you spread this stuff at your own peril. So when this guy went into the pizza restaurant in Washington, because uh, they alleged that Hillary Clinton was running a pedophile ring, this guy took it seriously, went in with an AR-15 and started shooting up the place. Thank God nobody got killed. But a pizza owner, under my theory, could sue Kuan for passing along garbage. That's a pretty dramatic step. The only way I know to make people more responsible who run these websites is to allow lawsuits when they go too far. If Donald Trump didn't like something Don Lemon tweeted, couldn't he then sue Twitter if you got rid of that? The point is that CNN is held to certain standards. You can't libel or slander 
slander somebody. You can't incite people. The First Amendment allows you to speak your mind, but it doesn't allow to yell. Fire in the theater! So these websites that we're talking about, hate-filled websites, neo-Nazi websites, if somebody is hurt because of the actions these websites inspired, sue the hell out of them. Freedom of speech is one thing. Being able to attack each other's ideas is part of America, but what's the line when you inspire people to commit acts of violence and turn on one another in a violent fashion? That's not free speech, uh, that's criminality. Come back tomorrow for more of our interview with Lindsey Graham.